So, next up, we're going to see what's in the expansion box of Dead of Winter Warring Colonies. Chris, you're still not here. You requested this. Why are you... I'll have to send this to you later. Or, or just say something about what you were doing. And be like, hey, you missed it. So let's see what's in it. So this is from Plaid Hat Games. Just like the base game. And it says ages 14 and up. 4 to 11 players. Duration 60 to 120 minutes. Uh, Dead of Winter was, was a co-op game. If you have not played it. This won't be much for spoilers. Um, you're basically surviving. Um, it's kind of along the zombie ap apocalypse style of gaming where you're trying to collect and hold on to resources your survivors um, it looks like this expansion uh, expands both Dead of Winter and Dead of Winter The Long Night with new survivors items, crossroad cards and crisis cards additionally if you own all three play the new epic co colony versus colony variant So there's some simultaneous play mechanics. There's some battles for resources and territory. Uh, play as a long, lone wolf, loyal to none. So, you know, of course, this is not a standalone. You do need the base game to play one of the two just mentioned. Either Long Night or Long Night. Uh, Dead of Winter. Uh, uh, yeah, Long Night. Dead of Winter, Long Night, or just standard Long Night. Dead of Winter. Uh, kept saying that wrong. You know what I mean. And yes, I do have both of those on my shelf. So, could experience that major game. Ooh. Now, I didn't say anything about the art a while ago. Now, I like how they've done the art on this. I'm not sure how well it shows up on screen, but a lot of the color of this, like this whole background is very matte finish. And then these two front characters are very glossy finish. So it makes it really pop and feel different. And apologies if you're hearing any extra noise. I live in an apartment and you can only do so much with neighbors and I'm in what's considered my living room near my main door to the hallway so you may occasionally hear someone out in the hallway I got someone moving in next door today so can't do much about it we live on we share our joy with others so we don't live in a bubble so I don't expect everything to be perfect so let's see what's in the box okay first off we got a Oh, it's a package. In this package, we have punch board, we have rule book. Underneath that, we see insert some stacks of cards. Oh, three different stacks, two regular size, and many. Looks like we've got some dice. Make sure you can still see those. A timer. Okay. Let's see if that's worth. We've got the stands for standees that we'll be punching out in a very simple insert some say that these this style of cardboard with just a couple of wells in it is more for shipping purposes and then some say hey that should be good enough for storage as well tell me which way you prefer are you hey this is shipping only or is this should this be designed for full term use on the shelf every day because as you can see, it's very straightforward. So we know typically when we see something like this, they will fail our shape test. Not a huge deal, but I'll just mention it. So this little packet, that kind of self-sealing tape, plastic, punch board, rule books. Let's find out the rules first. You know it. And we know it won't be going back in there because that punch board is going to be punched. So that's trash. Rule book. It says stop. If you want us to teach you how to play, you can visit plathatgames.com and watch a video explanation. That's always useful. So 
So it immediately talks about components, which is helpful. Um, compatible cards uh, for which ones for which of the base games you have if you have Dead of Winter, Dead of Winter, uh, Long Night. Uh, we got new components, talks about them, and points them out and what they do individually, which is very helpful. We have game setup, which here listed on one side and a very and a very detailed numbered setup, like a full table setup, which is helpful enough that you can tell what the component is, but not full of detail having to read a component in the picture, but the number next to it to say exactly what it is with reference to these numbers. Very well done. Uh, collection list, collect the following from your, whichever of the two base games you have right here. It gives you a list of what you're using from those. Uh, note optional cards. So the nice thing is you not have it looks like you don't have to reference back to the base game setup in rules. You can set you can jump to this for the full setup instead of like oh here's half of it then go back to the to the other rulebook for half of it. All the setup is in here it appears to be. So that's very useful in my opinion. Uh, we got round order stuff revealing certain things, player turns. This almost feels like full new rule set that you only need this now with occasional reference to the base game rules. Attacks and such. Um, examples, combats, and so, yeah, it really does feel like, feel like a full rule book and not just a quick add-on rule book that you have to fully compare to the base game, which is cool. Variants, uh, credits as usual with their website again. And this is always nice to see when a company does this and credits their playtesters. Because there's so many people that go into releasing, making, designing, doing artwork, and playing a game before it ever comes to be a Kickstarter or the store or a website for you to even play yourself as a consumer of the product. That these playtesters may have played once or multiple, multiple times over time before this ever hit a point to where they could sell the game. So it's cool to see when companies will do that. So yeah, that's a rulebook. Uh, looks like this is a sealed thing of card stock printed pieces. I'll leave that for the card stack. So let's get to these punches. Okay, so this is a lot of, we've got some big ones and a lot of small pieces for standees. So I think at this point, I can punch all these on the other camera, really show them off to you. Let's clear some space so y'all can see what we're about to do. Okay, first off, we got this board. See, it fits so perfect in that screen. You can see almost the full punch board. So we got a couple of things that are going to punch with counters on them. So it says they're combat tracks, bullets each side. Some more spaces right here. So let's see how they punch. And we'll do a quick pause on the music so we can listen. Paused. Let's go for that snap. Sorry if I hit the microphone there. Try this one again. Not, not, not a lot of snap to that. Let's see if the small ones have any snap. Okay, not bad, not bad. Very minor snap to it. So that means, what you can tell when it, very, with the minor snap, that tab is very small very minute like yeah you can see it right there at least I can I don't know if y'all can on through the camera but it just means you're not gonna have a crisp snap to it like you're used to hearing there's a little bit there because it's a tight fit very thin laser knife edge cut oh there's I heard that one
but overall decent thickness that board uh, printed on both sides which is very nice um, these big boards are just black because you only need to sh show them on one side but everything you're going to be ha oh that's a double printed Wolfden Wolfden so it doesn't matter which side you use it looks like so you can just throw it on the board and use it which is helpful all these bullet tokens double sided because you can be throwing these around the table you're going to shoot people right you want to just be able to throw it across the table oh, I'm going to shoot you or whatever you may do while playing let's get that music back on now okay we're going to be punching quite a few of these bullets real quick and then I'll punch all these standees these are punching very easily as you can see I've had no tear or attempt to tear yet they're just tight fitting because of the shape of the bullet itself isn't like a circle that just would typically pop out like that I always do. Uh, those have centers. The center popped out very easily as, as well. And then we'll take a really close look at all these standy pictures of new characters. So it looks like we got a guy that found some kind of armor suit of some sort. We have someone that's dressing almost like a superhero. We got our granny with the torch. Oh, you gotta be careful with these custom shapes. See how that's catching like that? It was cut all the way through though, which is very nice. So we got our granny with the torch. Um, we got almost, what's the best name for this kind of the the explorer with the gun and the the whip almost indiana jones like but a female character of that style uh, this one's upside down um, but of course because of the cut shape I'm just fitting it on here so i'll turn it um kind of a, a sneaky almost you could say black widow s kind of trying to be woman in black sneaking around very physical and we got our old man in the wheelchair with, with, the, sh with the gun and the classic blanket to keep the legs warm don't mess with him he may not walk but he's more than just talk uh, looks kind of like someone younger, but holding the gun and a knife. Possibly someone more like introverted, kind of, I don't want to call it bookwormish, but holding the book, kind of hoodie up. Uh, I don't even know how to describe that character. This next one makes me almost think of uh, Parks and Rec, uh, Ron Swanson like, very. Somewhat put together jeans and boots and jackets. Got that mustache going on. Another lady. Not sure what to say about that one, so we'll just let it go. Another older guy. Of course, there's going to be ones of all ages. Oh, that head's getting stuck. Oh, as you can tell, all of these are double sided because they are standees. I had to take a quicker look at that. I almost thought he was carrying a boombox. Nope, he's got his fisherman's boots and wet jacket and more like an ice chest he's going to work um, someone's ready to get to work on that one and then someone else with the gun more potentially native Indian of some sort that's integrated into society of course no generic or uh, I don't know the best word for it without sounding wrong. Um, using any, tri I guess, tribal garments on it. They are standardly dressed. They're not over the top exploiting a culture by using items or dress just to make it more obvious that they're someone 
Like, they all have their own definitive qualities, of course, but it's they're still generic enough that anyone can play as them, which is nicely done that way. Okay, so let's start opening some of these sealed things. Uh, first thing I noticed, this pack does not have a quick release, so I'm going to have to take a knife to it, which is not my preference. Um, see if I can catch one of these corners, or I'll have to try to slice between two cards to these card stock things. Okay. okay, at least I got that started. That was not what I like to do, but I avoided cutting and damaging any of these card stock cards. Uh, these look like so they're player reference cards slash boards that you can leave in front of players. They all the exact same thing. Oh, that's because of how many players does this play again? Eleven players. I was like, why are there so many reference cards? I forgot it plays that many players. So up to eleven players. So you do need a lot of reference board cards. We got some decks of cards. Uh, I'm going to start with the ones that have some interesting back. These do not have quick release at all, so I'm going to have to take a knife to it again. Plastic does look loose enough. I can get it on an edge at least. Still not my preferred way of having and finding cards in a, in a new game. But, of course, each our own preference. So let's see how many card backs we got here. Let's see what I got room to show off here. Three different backs so far. Let's get this other one opened up and see if any of those match the same back. A lot of plastic on the floor today. Trash pile. Okay, we've got some more backs. Show that one off. Got some different cards. All these are clipboard based. Um, looks like uh, medium, long, short for how long they take. Kind of, I guess, different scenarios you can play in the game. Okay, because it talks about setup on them. So I guess there's different scenario setups you can do and then pick how long a game you want to play as well. And we got another card back and another. So let's see what are on these stacks. I assume these backed ones are these stand all these standees we punched. And their stats, yep. So we got the guy in the wheelchair was a veteran. We had, oh, she was a cowgirl. I couldn't tell it was a cowboy hat before. I guess it's a revolver lasso. We had a marketing rep, okay. Relatively generic security officer. So that's why he had kind of the armor. A vigilante, <laughs> okay. They're close to the heroes, get up. Auto mechanic. Yep, so he's carrying his like a ice chest of sorts. Artist. So that's I guess what she was meant to be. I could not tell based on just the standee. Maybe she's holding a portfolio. Uh, a CEO. Okay, so very well dressed. A priest. Okay. The student. Yep, you could tell. One of the younger looking ones. The retiree. Okay. It's the, the not a job. A small business owner. Okay. The spy. Okay. Kind of like I said, it looked like Black Widow at first sight. Like very spy esque for sure. The lobbyist.
Okay, and based on the name of this one, which I would butcher if I try to pronounce it, so I want a more native name of some sort. And economist. Okay, not much about that one. Okay, so those are all our characters that match the Sandies. Uh, it's like diseases of some sort or things that could hurt you. So we got like a flu, gathering of fiends, uh, 30 below, so freezing, empty stomachs, never seen again. So I guess these are essentially ways that you can get really hurt or potentially die. Plot twist. Oh, no. You're all apes. They're coming. Of course they are. A fire. Oh, that would be bad. Let's see what the red paws are. I can move some of these stacks around. Um, it looks like some setup cards as well. Um, I guess paper. You potentially combine these with the other ones in different combinations. Because they have win scenarios with their setup. Interesting. Let's see what these missions are. So we have burning the past. Crowd control, a winter festival, earning their trust, freedom fighter, guru, puppet master, guardian angel, better home. So these all have effects if you meet the mission criteria. Essentially, commando, you become death, maniac, supplier, lean on me. So I don't want to give too much away. I'll let you explore those on your own as you play the game at some point, hopefully. Let's see what these other two decks are about now. I'll set that off in the corner so we can have room to see this one. So this looks like gear and item cards, rope, grenades, comic books, spray paint. It's motivational art. This one is hang in there, baby. Polar bear on a branch. Kind of seems out of place. But who knows what happens in an apocalyptic scenario. Snowsuit, okay. Dog food. Even your dog's gotta eat. Backpack. Oh, we gotta have our board game. Always gotta have a board game. And it raises morale by one. Yep, anything to bring everyone together and raise the spirits. Middle detector, a map. Multi-purpose tool, bike, stealth gear, water, some candy. Want a bite? Uh, coffee. Bow and arrow, taser, brass knuckles, bullets. You gotta have those bullets. We found the punch outs. You gotta use them somehow. And some fireworks. Now again, I have not played Dead of Winter for probably a couple of years now, A, because granted last year was very hard to get together with anyone. Let's see, these are all scenario trigger cards, so we'll go through some of the names of them, but we won't be able to go all over all this text form, just, it's so much. We have Atticus Sanders. Hawk Wheeler, Emerald, Short Bus, Guns and Kicks, Scott Wheeler, Giggles. Why is it called Giggles? If a player laughs and that player controls your survivor, a non colony location. <laughs> Interesting. Terrorize, Bunker, Fresh Meat, Lion's Den, Father Fitzpatrick, but Siege or Sown, Civil Servants, Justice, Rations, Broken. Child Soldiers, Tragedy, Blue Ribbon, Bacon. If the player controls a survivor at the grocery store. So kind of, they have some triggers if they occur. Preemptive Strike, Proposition, Mind for the Future, Greener Grass, Temptation, Coming to Life, Oscar, 
Rios, Fernando Suarez, Marcus Johnson, Enforcer, Huang Fen, Charlotte Ross, Return to Cinder. Okay, what's that one? There are six or more survivors in the graveyard. Oh, time to return the dead. Danica Walker, George Coleman, Bernadette Wilson, Rohan Patil. Sticky situation. The player controls a survivor at the enemy colony. Oop. We gotta be careful with that one. Safe cracker. And my tiny horsey. If the player controls a male survivor at the grocery store and there is at least one helpless survivor at the colony. Okay. Interesting. Maybe it's a morale booster of some sort. I didn't want to give too much away. Snake oil. The chosen one. Quit pro. pro. Kidnapped. Siege warfare. Garbage day and learning to share. So a lot of cards that you can experience as you play. Of course, I'm not going to say too much because I don't know. If oh, we got one more little deck of cards to deal with. And then we'll be wrapping up the night. This one's going to be a lot harder to get into. It's definitely not as loose. Come on, get into that corner. Thank you. Okay. Glad it wasn't, didn't do anything. Okay, so the backs looks like targets of some sort all in. Plus three to combat, you got some ambush on guard, retreat, surround, all in, ambush on guard, retreat, and surround again. So kind of some special effects to, to fighting it, looks like. We have a little sand timer. Uh, these, you don't see a huge amount of games with these in, in them nowadays, at least on the hobby side, but sometimes they're useful. I do like how they change the color of the sand and the caps on it, so it's not your standard basic white or, or yellow, whatever, on the caps. It's kind of a simple gray and a blue sand in it. Don't know how long that timer is for. Hard to show off. Here, I'll try to put it on screen for you. Maybe it'll show it going down as I open this next stuff. Got a couple of dice right here. Boom, boom. I think these are, when you're fighting, attacking, these are results, targets, attacks on them. These look to be, what, 12-sided die? Uh, but, of course, custom. Very easy to read with the icons and the numbers on them. Gray with the white background. And then, last but not least, we had the standee bases we'll do a quick test on. Now, I think it might have enough for all of them. I'm just gonna do one right now. Do a quick test on how well it fits. Okay, that's taking a lot of pressure and that barely got into it. So hopefully these aren't ones that would tear too easily. I'm gonna see going in from the side. Uh, definitely not much better. So these do run the risk of being too tight, but at least once they're on, they will hold. Yeah, so that took a decent amount of pressure. A very minor indentation on the cardboard, but if these are ones that are meant to remain on once applied, then not as big a deal because you're not likely to see it. Oh, it looks like the timer finished. But maybe a, a one to two minute timer. I'd have to look that up. So that's what's in the box. I'll have to pack it away. Of course, it will not pass our shake test right now as is. There's too many loose components and no extra ziplocs. Too many cards. Uh, I, I, in the, because we punched it, you're going to have this loose section at the top. They're going to slide around. This is definitely a, you need an organizer, you need ziplocs, or you need something else added. But yeah, that was Dead of Winter, Warring Colonies.